What success I think lands like in my body, it's magnetism. And every f time I'm magnetic, I get violated. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So just, just the, the history, just the history of your life. Anytime. Okay. <laughs> so here I am knowing this, but I'm ready. I'm seriously ready to make the change. I have the pitch decks for these clients whose yeah. social medias I want to change oh up. I want I have that to all work so bad. Yeah, and it will. It will. But the number one thing, and this is where I might get Delulu. <laughs> huh? Delulu. <laughs> Delusional. Okay. Will you hold my hand for a second? I need connection. Uh, these numbers are making me ang angang. Thank you so much. Angang. Okay. <laughs> well, that's angry numbers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, our girl is going through it. This is obvious. And we want to encourage her to face herself so she can tell us what's actually going on. So the only reason it feels dishonest to you guys and to me is because she's not asking herself the questions to know the truth. And then she's not giving us the truth. I'm assuming the stories are real. And I think the tears are real. And I do think she looks a little crazy, which to be fair, aren't we all? So I would really, I, I'm able to like be compassionate enough to understand like my girl is sick, but also to be aware that like, does she know how sick she is? I really want to make it clear because look, I usually do make fun of a lot of people I review and I think a lot of those things are warranted, but like, I can't quite make fun of her anymore because like, she's not rooted in like, you know, I just feel like she's a little too far gone for me to feel within reason to criticize her too much. Like I, this is, to me, this is a huge mental health problem. Hello, I'm Amber. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm 27 years old and almost a half. <laughs> Sorry, my inner child speaking right now. I'm gonna start that over. <laughs> okay, yeah. Just so for the record, it's 27 and a half. Okay. And this is financial audit. Okay, okay. cool. So what do you do for a living? We're going to go with that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I think it shows your energy. <laughs> it, does. So, it does. It does. It does. You're bombastic. What do you do for yeah. a living? I am a web show host and producer. Yeah. Okay. My show is called Healing Amber. Okay. So we're getting that off of the ground and running. But right now to make, you know, ends meet ish. Yeah. You've seen my financial statements. Oh. <laughs> we are making commercials. So all the ones you see on social media where there's a random oh. woman telling you to buy this product. Are you that random woman? Yeah. Hmm. What products have you sold? I don't recognize you. Oh my God. Okay. So there's this one built ad that goes around a lot where I'm telling people, um, hey, you can get paid early and you can use this money to pay off your rent and you'll make rewards points. Ugh, and then other why ones were- Why would you want to support that? That's shit though. That's like payday I know. Loans. And they only paid me like- 200 bucks. So you accepted 200 bucks to show something that's to act that like hurts people. Mm. Oh, you're acting it. Ooh, moral dilemma. And we're only a minute and 27 seconds in. How do you guys feel about that? Is what she's doing immoral? Yeah, so you're not pushing it. You just acted for them. Yeah, that's one thing okay. that's actually been steering me away from the UGC life, the user generated content life. Yeah. And it's been feeling basically like you're saying too hyper capitalistic. Didn't she say just now that she does some healing stuff, which is why I saw this on TikTok, something about healing. She does some spiritual stuff. I don't think really will make people's lives better. It might, I don't know. I haven't really tried it yet. I was acting. Well, I mean, the nice thing about capitalism is you get to choose what and what not to put your yes. work behind. So I wouldn't say ultra capitalistic with that. Like, I mean, it's your say to say where you want to put things. Now you make might, might make less money for that. Now mm -hmm. I make a lot less money because I accept like 1% of the sponsorships that reach out to me. And yeah. they probably have those pieces of shit, those payday crap. They probably have. So. And I've said no. You could have said no too. 200 bucks. I don't think it would make it break or anything. Well, maybe it would for you because you're not like making ends meet. No, I have negative money in one bank account. Ooh. So this has kind of oh, been what I've been balancing. Than. I'm balancing trying to participate in a capitalistic society that I really. I'm going to get triggered. She's already making me go like, mm, 
girl. Why are you even on this show, girl? Because I want to be able to change this. I love Caleb. I love Caleb. He's like country what? from the inside out. But the I mean, thing- you. What did she just say? Because I want to be able to change this country from the inside out. Oh, she thinks she's Gandhi, bro. But. I mean, thing- you can vote like everyone else, but no, no, no. but you that still make a difference. <laughs> OK, well, what I was going to say, I mean, I was going to say you can vote like everyone else. So, you know, put the people in that you want. That's totally fine. Agree, disagree. doesn't matter. I don't get into politics. You can talk about whatever you want to talk yeah. about. But but regardless, Ooh. in order. Mm-hmm. Yes, Chan, she's using buzzwords and personality. Yeah. Well, she gives me icky vibes, bro. No offense. She's 27. She's just like figuring out her life. I get it. But like, I don't know who she's been hanging out with, but Ellie, God, Ellie's so shallow. To survive, you do have to exist in the reality of reality. Yes. Uh, So what's been really interesting has been coming to terms with what you just said, reality. And I'm trying to get my inner reality to finally reflect on the outside. So there was a whole history of some seriously traumatic sh- that went down in Los Angeles and before. Wait, good. Uh, mm. and, mm-hmm. and I really froze up and stopped participating in life, you could say, and I let others support me. Oh my God, you guys are like boomers. You know when you say things, Vash, look, I'm 25. This is no excuse. You're a boomer. Listen to me. When I reference people's age, as an explanation for where they are, I'm explaining the timeline of m- what category of person they are in regards to that age. So when you say like, well, that's no excuse. I'm 25. You're a boomer. That's like boomer saying, why don't you own a house? I owned a house at 25. When I'm referencing her age, I'm saying she's a specific category of people, much like myself, who at 27 was definitely still like not understanding how to run her life. And she was in like very much debt, like $60,000 of debt. Can't remember, but I was I was pretty high up on my debt. And it was an, ex- it was an explanation for where I was in regards to my age compared to my mental health compared to my tools sb says i owned a house at 12 there's no excuse good point you're right i'm a failure luckily now that i've done all this inner work yeah and i have been realigning my life that ugc (laughs) work the commercial work it didn't feel aligned so i'm doing this easy job like let's say what's the easy job like let's say i put in 30 minutes for an ag1 greens commercial where they're like why is your skin so glowy and i'm like ag1 you know that kind of thing And so cool, I just made, let's say 300 off of that, but why do I not feel fulfilled? And why am I not taking my time to actually participate more? Sure. Mm. So what I found feels best right now is helping small businesses. So I'm taking the skills that I used in creating social media ads, you could say, and I'm turning it into my consulting and production company. Which I'm all about as long as you're making a living. Mm. We're yes. not making a living. Mm. Have you, so, what are you bringing in from this? I, I want to get an idea of your income. What are you bringing in? Yeah. Okay. Luckily, when I do a commercial gig, I can get, let's say now, 300 to to $1,000 for one ad. Yeah, but how many do we do a week on average? Mm. So at this point in my life, I finally made it up to, I'm doing like, let's say three to five a month. A month? Exactly, yeah. Cool, let's do that. Sounds more like a side gig. So exactly, this one, I just wanna do the social media ads until mm-hmm. the debts are paid off. That credit card but, debt, but, 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 all that sh- Okay. Yeah. But you're- Hold on, if she's doing three to five gigs a month, or was it three 3,000 to 1,000? That's kind of full-time minimum wage salary. So she either could be doing more or she's doing enough. Hmm. You're negative in a checking account. We haven't yes. even gotten your things. Yes, Ooh, I agree. Yes. I agree. Do this until you pay off your if you pay off your debt. If it's making enough money to survive, yeah, sure. If it in order to pay off your debt, it's something you don't want to do. That's great. But if we can't make ends meet, then I'm sorry. We might be working at McArches instead of this. Like you know, Arches, McDonald's, Golden Arches. Wow. Uh, what? No, that's fine. Not for me. Because she thinks she's better. Bro. Oh, I know, but something <laughs> uh, In LA, I think they pay 20 bucks an hour for McDonald's, right? In and out's 20 bucks. Fivian is for everyone, though. And you might have to do I something know. you don't want to do. And that's what's been pissing me off. Like, I f- wear my. How does she live in LA? Expensive clothes. And I buy my dog the expensive food. And I do all this sh- that will, like, make me feel better when really actually gaining some sovereignty and some independence sure. will make me feel better in the heart, right? Yeah. And so now I'm also turning, I guess I'm playing 
uh, as you say, kind of two sides of the coin. I'm doing the work that doesn't feel that good in order to survive barely yeah. because there's so much resistance there. But now I am actually just in the middle of my first, first pitch deck to a client in order to consult them in social media authenticity. Damn. You're building a business. Dude, I'm all about building a business. Yeah. When I built this business, which is in a similar space, this is online, social media, video, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. I didn't do it until I had a 12 month emergency fund and I didn't quit what I needed to survive until this mm. made enough to survive. You're kind of just going all in on it. Now, yeah. Land of America, you know, put in all the risk. Doesn't mean there's not consequences. And sometimes con consequences might be your missing payments, your negative money and checking account. So that's where I'm just going to the reality type thing. It's like, yeah, me too. How do you think I felt when I was looking through this? So very empathetic. <laughs> I want you to do what you want to do. I want you to, I want you to find purpose in life. I think that's what we ask her how she's paying LA rent. I can't wait till we get there. Who's how is she paying rent in LA? LA is outrageous. But we all want to get to through work through work yeah there's also again the reality of math <laughs> what do you bring in on a monthly basis on average oh my god what's really sad is that what I've do you bring oh brother so home stressed. on a monthly basis on average i don't know because okay. i avoid looking at these bank accounts well you that's know, when not you a choice so stressed you're like i'm just not gonna open bank of america today Ooh. i'm sorry that's not a choice that's a that's an immature childish thing to do it is you say it's not you know when you do life. this so i know when children do that yeah i actually I'm gonna be real. I was very diligent as a child about how much money I was bringing in. I literally feel overrun once in a while by, in spirituality, we call them the inner children, the inner aspects. And I literally have been giving them everything that they want. <sighs> They're like, oh my God. The girls. <laughs> Girl. Girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? Okay. <laughs> oh my God. I'm scared to make money because <laughs> the fear of success means so many things your fear of success is more than your fear of getting kicked out because you can't pay rent therapy that's what i mean if you like are you if you're therapy right like sp stop spending money on expensive clothes and go to therapy remember when we were talking about vibes she's got the vibes of a stereotypical la girl can i just say la is so diverse but she absolutely does have the vibes of a stereotypical la girl in so many ways and i'm like Ma'am. Um, yeah, there are some issues right now with where I live. There's molding. Management company is getting sued. I haven't had to pay rent. I'm in a really weird That's oh, good. That's situation. bad oh. and good. Bad and good. I'm sorry <laughs> that you're living there and that sucks. And that's obviously yeah, the landlord's the responsibility. Issues. Yeah. I have to deal with law stuff. Wait, so she isn't paying rent? The thing is that I've manifested a life at this point where Wait. law stuff living there and that sucks. Really weird. That's management company is getting sued. I haven't had to pay rent. So she doesn't have to pay rent in LA and she's still in debt. Girl got a spending problem. Girl got to go to an addiction counselor or something. Damn. I'm in a really weird. That's good. That's situation. bad and good. Bad and good. I'm <laughs> sorry that you're living there and that sucks. And that's obviously yeah, the landlord's the response. Mm, okay. Discord says this is not healthy inner child work. FYI, obviously, this is super toxic. This is why I hate sort of the modernization of a real industry that is mental health. Mental health is a real industry. And spiritualism and meditation, like there are obviously like people who are in it for the wrong reasons. But inner child work is legitly very helpful if you do it right. But obviously, if you just like go on Instagram, you're like, my inner child wants me to buy her all this stuff. It's like, girl, your inner child has a fear of commitment and is self-soothing with buying things or something, right? So obviously, yes, Discord, this isn't like a healthy relationship with inner child work. I don't, I should have said that out loud, but I thought it was obvious. So she's like a walking red flag in that regard. Like, oh, she's one of those girls who's like read about it on Instagram. And she's just like, yeah, this is like what is going on. But like, that's so common on online communities. It's so common with young people. It's so common when uh, kids who are raised with the internet. That seems like really common with like, sh I call it like the shallow bubble. Ones who are raised with strong religion, strong politics, strong foundations. Um, it seems really common.
like I I just know a whole bubble that does this. So obviously that's like seems I don't, like a duh to me. Like I know exactly what bubble she's in, right? So it's like, okay, we're watching a girl in this bubble. I want to see more like how Caleb handles it, right? She's about to talk about manifestation and she's going to use the manifestation wrong as well. I just know it. The thing is that I've manifested a life at this point where okay. I am taken care of so much by other people. You've manifested a life? Um, subconsciously. Okay. Subconsciously my inner aspects and inner children and teenagers, whatever, have felt safest when others are supporting us rather than when we are supporting ourselves. Because then it As Preach would say, mental health. Man, mental health, trauma be rampant, girl. No reasonable person talks like this. This is something. What's going on here? What are we dealing with? What is it? <clears throat> But it means we're not alone. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Do you see a therapist? <laughs> Great question. See many therapists, coaches. That's also a red flag. When you need many therapists, when you've been in therapy for too long, when you don't have an extreme reason. I'm also a coach to a certain extent. So yeah, what's annoying is I am hyper aware. You're a coach? And I'm a still, spiritual coach? Um, I'm a spiritual healer and holistic health coat. Oof, this is gonna be rough, boys. This is gonna be rough, bros. Oh, ma'am, oh, ma'am. Well, this is a throwback to another episode we've had. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we had another spiritual healer on here, another life coach. How do we feel comfortable, by any means, giving anyone advice on life if you're if you are just failing in the united states yeah i am not a financial coach yeah but how can you be coaching people on their life if you yourself could be getting them into a damaging position because you yourself are in a damaging oh so caleb and i believe in the same thing don't take advice from people who don't walk the walk even if it's good advice what if this girl gave you good advice should you take it or would you rather learn from somebody who walks the walk? Everyone is different. Maybe this girl gives really solid advice. What do you think? Do you think if she doesn't use it in her own life, you should still listen to her? Because that is the controversy on some parts of the internet, right? We've had this conversation many times. For me, I want to talk to somebody who's walked the walk. Like if you are convincing people that if you think what you do is okay and you convince people to get in that same headspace, you're leading people down a dangerous path to the point where they might not be able to pay rent. They might not be able to retire. Ooh, it's like taking marriage advice from someone who's not married. You know who I think is really good at giving marriage advice when they're not married? People who are giving you advice on interpersonal relationships, not advice on how to be married. People who are really good at talking about interpersonal relationships, I think could give really solid marriage advice because they're talking about not being married, but they're talking about how you treat people. And I think that's what you should look for if you're taking advice from someone who's not married or you look for people who are really good at interpersonal relationships to talk about relationships with, whether they're married or not. But I do agree, like, they wouldn't have exact advice for, like, being married, you know? I get that slippery slope. I get that. From my point of view, I don't coach anybody in finances. No, no, no. Because I'm very open about Not finances. I'm issues. talking about headspace in general. Yeah. Ooh. So what I coach people on is how to find joy and healing in the present moment. And but what if they, what if what you're teaching. Damn, Caleb going hard. Is through that present moment they get in the same headspace as you, which has led you to thinking, to just accepting this as reality. This should not be considered okay. Being to a be child honest, is not okay. Everyone else is doing really great finances wise besides me. But yeah, what I do in my time away from participating in capitalism has been some intense inner work. You're in the and United I just States. Teach that. It's, I mean, this is, Again, this isn't politics. I don't say whether I agree or disagree with our current system. This is my problem with the kind of the coach bubble. I really do feel like they're selling you something that they can't even walk the walk with. I just want you to walk the walk. I don't care if you're a coach. I'm great with that. But like, how is a girl? She doesn't feel very joyful to me, but maybe she is. I don't know. Could she be joyful? Because like you can have bad finances and be joyful. I really do believe that, right? Like I'm not the great finance, like greatest financially. I'm just learning. But I also like I'm not pa I'm past my spending era. So I'm past like um, misuse of funds era, which I had in my 20s. In my 20s, I, s I still spent money irresponsibly. 
But in my 30s, I stopped doing that. To be fair, she's 27. So she's probably not ready, but she could be helpful in some ways. I don't want to write her off completely, but I do think her, she probably doesn't know why she believes in what she believes in, which is what makes her sketchy. Yes, yes, Brit. That's what it is. Brit's so good. It's giving the spend money to manifest more money. That's what it is. I know that bubble. You guys know that bubble. They believe if you spend money, you'll manifest more money. And I'm like, and then some hustle bubbles are like, you gotta spend money to make money. Yes, but reasonably, responsibly, use wisdom. Can't even look at myself. Like yeah. I'm only brave enough to look at it right now because you. I don't think you could have joy. And also maybe you could. I don't think you could really have joy and not be able to face yourself. That's interesting. That dichotomy between I teach people how to have joy. But how do you have joy without being able to face yourself in some capacity? I think of joy as something very, very sacred and like such a construct, right? And very, very like foundational about the relationship you're having with your consciousness. I don't think joy is frivolous. I don't think it's happiness. I think joy is much more profound. Somebody who's passionate enough about yeah. other people with this. So I really do freaking appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate you being here. You're putting situation on display for many people to learn from. I hope what that I can help transfer? somebody. Is joy contentment? No, but could be a synonym depending on your definition. I think joy is like a true understanding within yourself and your place either within the universe or the bubbles. So twos can have joy and fives can have joy. And you're having like more than contentment. Contentment to me, like I'm pretty content. I've been like, Content feels a little frivolous, but you if you that word is synonymous with like profoundness, then you can say contentment. But it's about being like having a great and solidified understanding between the foundation of yourself in relation to what I would call the universe if you're a five and a bubble if you're a two. So I've met a lot of joyful twos and I've met a lot of joyful fives. But the joy is like consistent and is stable through no matter how like rough life gets. Like you don't, your spirit doesn't get crushed because the world around you is ending type thing. I've seen a lot of people who have joy, like think about like a tragedy hitting people and they still maintain their joy. Like there's something in people where they have such a connection to like the foundation of their belief within their bubble or within the universe that they do not like falter no matter how ugly the world gets. That's kind of amazing, right? Um, which is different from like just feeling stressed and angry. That's not the same. I'm not saying they're happy through the tragedy. I'm saying they don't like their spirit isn't crushed. So 2,100 came in for the, through that. Dope. Cool. You didn't know that. I didn't know the total. No, Pangea I haven't Holdings? budgeted yet. <laughs> Pangea Holdings. Um, I think that's like a shaving commercial because I'm a hairy girl. Congratulations. Thank you. And <laughs> Venmo, what usually comes in through Venmo? Like why? It used to be sugar daddy money. Yeah. What is it now? How much is it? 307 total across all the Venmo in. The past month? Or within this. I'm not going to lie. I have no clue. Okay. Ready, set, ink. That is one of my agencies that connects me to brands for the UGC social media commercials. Sick. You made $91. All right. <laughs> so Go the Venmo, can we count that as income or was that just like, we split dinner and like someone pay for it. You, I think it was partially that. Okay, then saying. I'm not going to count that as income. So it's income awesome. total that came in. You live in Los Angeles, correct? Oh my God, yeah. $2,891. That's a good month. I feel like she'd be making more money if she worked at In-N-Out, right? Because In-N-Out is, isn't it $20 an hour in LA now? She could be making a little bit, like a third, not that much more if she worked full-time at In-N-Out. So I guess not, but like. Okay, it's not the worst. Hmm. Well, that's a month for anyone else living out in LA. <laughs> I know, I know. So with the molding issue, I'm legally not required to pay rent right now. I know, that's the only reason so you're I'm, surviving. Exactly, exactly. And I have EBT, I have food stamps. Whoa, food stamps and you're buying, ooh, food stamps and she has a spending issue? That's not good. I was getting $281 a month and I just had that knocked down about a mm. Britt says she's an inf <clears throat> influencer that seems low for a popular inf influencer. I don't think she's popular. And a lot of influencers do not make automatically a lot of money. You have to turn it into money. Look at Boogie. He has 4 million subscribers and he makes $4,000 a month. So you know what I mean? There are channels that are smaller on YouTube making just as much money as Boogie is. Like in my lowest months, I make about... Three thousand, four thousand dollars, and then sometimes it goes up. It's never the same amount every month. So, like, Boogie and I, 
some months are making the same amount of money. And Boogie is 4 million subscribers. So like most people are middle class out here. And then if you're an occasionally rich YouTuber, you make a lot of money. Right? So like she's, she's for the little she's working, she's still making good money. She should, but obviously like, I don't know what she's doing with her life. Like food stamps? Why are you on food stamps? Don't, doesn't she make too much to be on food stamps? But like, is she, but again, she also has a spending issue. So it's like a hundred dollars since I made more money this month. It's interesting because yeah. like, you, but you're choosing not to work though. The thing is, like, up until... I am all for support for people who can't work. If you get disability, you get laid off, especially because yeah. you're paying into that system, yeah. you know, through different taxes and everything. Uh, when you're working, absolutely support people that just can't make ends meet because they're working their ass off. Mm -hmm. But you're choosing not to work. You're kind of acting like an entitled person mm -hmm. who's like, this is what I want to do. So mm -hmm. everyone come in and support me because I can't make ends meet doing what I want to do instead of growing up being an, an adult and actually taking care of your own life. Mm. Can I tell you what's a story? This, what's this girl's? Oh, my God. She just said, can I tell you a story? Oh, Lord. She only has 5,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, she's probably not making that much money. Okay, yeah, she's she's making a reasonable amount of money, I think. Yeah, 3000 my lowest month on average, even with my calls, with everything. Yeah, yeah, I make an average income, guys. I told you, I make an average income. Some years, like last year, I made a lot of money, but like every year is different. Some years I make more money, some years I make less. That's why this job, like you have to be really careful because nothing's guaranteed. That's why I say like I always want to live like a little humble no matter how much money I make because I've made mistakes like you always think like money's gonna last but like money's like always gonna be average you know yes you can tell i'm very hyper aware of the situation so it comes off as entitlement for your income, but yeah. <laughs> yes i ignore that um until today but long story short um i was doing the classic la i transferred from a career of tutoring little kids which was the most fulfilling job i've ever had making a lot of money luckily doing that like a hundred dollars a session but then for some reason, you know, more on camera stuff was calling me, but I go into freeze mode. Mm -hmm. So after this traumatic event, that just was a layer on to other little assaults, other sexual harassment, all these other disgusting acts against me and a lot of other women, my bodily response is to freeze. So I had past thoughts okay. that came up and the way they manifested for me was to doom scroll, to not participate in life, to not connect with other people, to barely connect with my dog. And so here I was living a very privileged life in the sense where I could reach out and someone would take care of me. Someone would yeah. throw me a rope and save me. I would have coaches give me free coaching. I would have spiritual healers give me a session, et cetera. And that got comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So I was sitting with the um, knowledge of this as I'm doing my inner work. I'm on my healing journey. I'm sharing it online. And the most frustrating part was that I can see my life situation, but there was something within me that wasn't willing to change it because going back to the fear of success, here I was so knowledgeable and i even cried about this um yesterday but the change that we're all inherently scared of is what has been holding me back from making the changes to so these what do you think numbers. what do you think what do you think the consequence of your success is going to be what's your fear what's your phobia okay can i tell you there actually is a huge phenomenon that happens and again i'm not a therapy channel i'm a philosophy channel but there is a huge phenomenon that happens and it's like a catch 22 of self-sabotage. I can't imagine the Like, it's like a, I feel like, she, again, she feels a little bit like she's weaponizing therapy terms. So she feels a little bit like a liar to me, but it's like a person who goes, I'm so afraid of success. Cause what if I can't handle it? What if I gain success and I lose it? Like these are all perfectly rational, well, reasonable, common intr intrusive thoughts of, what if I am successful, then who am I? Because I'm so used to being a non-success. I'm so used to being a non-success that I almost can't imagine it. They're almost like saying, why be successful? Because what if I fail at it? Or what if I'm successful and I lose it all? Like there is a part that you learn in therapy and through philosophy 
where you radically accept that it could go and, you know, it could come and go away. Like I am not, you know, Abba says it all the time. We love Abba. He says it all the time. YouTube could go away tomorrow. Living your life as if everything you built could go to way, could go to way tomorrow is also about humbling yourself in the faces of or in the reality that you can't control everything. So I kind of agree with, I do fully agree with Abba in that sense, right? Like where you can't assume everything's going to stay the same, but that doesn't mean you got to stay away from success. But when you get the success, you have to remember that it's also fluid and it could change as well. So look, this could all go away tomorrow. What if the internet goes away? You know, I'm always reading like conspiracy articles on my TikTok. They come up all the time. These like, I'm not reading it. I'm watching it. They'll be like, in two in two weeks next year, there's going to be no electricity. And I'm like, oh, my job's going to suck. I don't know if those things are ever like, they just sound crazy to me. But everyone's always like, oh, like there's a comet that's going to fly over and we're going to lose electricity for a month. And I'm like, wow, it's really going to suck, right? But again, it's like, okay, so let's say that happened. Let's play a what if game. It's like, okay, let's say what that happened. What would I do? That's a great question to ask yourself. But just, again, because I have my joy, it's like, it doesn't matter. Whatever happens, we'll figure it out, right? Like, we'll just figure it out. But it feels like with her, she's like using weaponized language. She's learning the right words, but weaponizing it to like stay in a rut. Does that make sense? Okay. First of all, the harassment and especially assault and just anything like that, that's terrible. I am so sorry that happens and it happened, happens in the world, but I'm so sorry that happened. And it's totally reasonable to have a response like that and not want to like go back to that job and stuff. Where I'm a little scared is like our fear of success. I don't want the fear of success within itself to be an excuse and reason to not get our together and live an adult life. Yeah. Now, <laughs> fear of going through a situation like you've been in before mm -hmm. in terms of harassment mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that is a totally justified one. Is that your fear? Success leads to that? Or what's your fear of success? What, what's, what's the phobia behind it? To answer this in two parts, one, I know that the fear is probably manifesting the same as excitement would. So it's also okay. like, okay, I could change this to, hey, let's just get excited. Let's get excited about success, but it's easier said than done, right? So when it comes to what success I think lands like in my body, it's magnetism. And every f time I'm magnetic, I get violated. <laughs> Okay, so, okay. So just, just the, the history, just the history of your life, anytime. Okay. <laughs> so here I am knowing this, but I'm ready. I'm seriously ready to make the change. I have the pitch decks for these clients whose yeah. social medias I want to change oh up. I want I have that to all work so bad. Yeah, and it will, it will. But the number one thing, and this is where I might get Delulu. <laughs> huh? Delulu. <laughs> Delusional. Okay. Will you hold my hand for a second? I need connection. Uh, these numbers are making me ang ang gang. Thank you so much. Ang gang. Okay. <laughs> well, that's angry numbers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, our girl is going through it. This is obvious. And we want to encourage her to face herself so she can tell us what's actually going on. So the only reason it feels dishonest to you guys and to me is because she's not asking herself the questions to know the truth and then she's not giving us the truth. So when Caleb gives her an answer, the reason it sounds fake is probably because she hasn't faced herself enough to know what's actually true. She's probably sharing a real story though. I'm assuming the stories are real and I think the tears are real and I do think she looks a little crazy, which to be fair, aren't we all? So I would really, I'd, I'm able to like be compassionate enough to understand like my girl is sick, but also to be aware that like, does she know how sick she is? You know what I mean? Because like that's the problem is kind of punching down a little bit if we kind of go into her too much. But the problem is, is like, because she's got such a, the problem is like, she might, it's hard because you want to judge her so hardly, like harshly, but she's obviously like mentally unwell, right? So a part of me 
wants like again we have to balance that like I'm compassionate with this person but obviously this person is very unwell so that's kind of sad uh I hope she gets a better therapist you know she seems performative to me Jade said I believe her traumas but it's like she's dramatizing it I I think that's why I think she's in uh unwell I think in some ways performatively performatively lying is a is a sign of mental health. Maybe not mental illness, but like maybe mental health. So when I say mental health, I obviously, you guys should know, means like some sort of dysregulation in regards to yourself and your feelings, emotions, or perceptions. So she is performing. She is lying, but she's not lying about being mentally unwell. She's lying to herself about what kind, how much, and then she's lying to us about what kind, how much, so she is performing because she's coping. And that's the problem. It's like the cope is clear. The question is, how do we get her to the right therapist? How do we get her to the right doctors? How do we get her to the right philosophy? How do we get her to actually like face herself? Right? That's the hard thing. Because she says she's in therapy. She said she goes to many therapists. That's also a red flag. You shouldn't need to go to many, though that sometimes is someone's story. You should be going to the right ones. You should say, hey, I haven't found the right therapist yet, but I'm looking for the right one. I'm having trouble finding someone who can help me. But there's obviously the right one. So again, it's like, she's obviously mentally unwell. And obviously at the same time, it's hard not to look at her and think like she's a little self-defeatist as well. You know, June says, are you streaming every day this week? I stream Monday through Friday. I stream Monday through Friday, girl, and then Discord events on the weekends most of the time. Whoop, whoop. But yeah, I feel I feel for her. But man, she needs help. She needs a lot of help. It's hard to be compa- it's hard to sympathize with her. She's very unsympathetic. But that's again, it's because she's putting up such a cope, such a front. She's performing so hard. It's almost too much. It, it is too much. It's not almost. It's just too much. Like she's doing too much. That's what it is. Girl, you're doing too much. Yeah. I get delusional, you could say, when I don't participate in reality because. I think she might have a, obviously I'm not a therapist. I don't know this, but like, I wonder if she has like a disorder that's actually making it harder. I wonder if she has like an abandonment problem or she has something. Cause like, I'm sorry, I'm, this is more than just um, like sh- emotion. This is something. I have this knowledge, knowing, if you will, of of my calling, of my web show, oh, changing yeah. the world by me giving. Could she be? Okay, I'm going to put this into the universe, but like, could this be psychosis? Like, could this be a manic episode? Like, do you know what I mean? Do you think this is possible? Yeah, I wonder if she's actually having like a severe mental break. Like I kind of feel like very concerned, honestly. Uh Yeah, this feels like Do you think it might be BPD BPD? Not with this language. I'm thinking more like manic or um I'm thinking bipolar or psychosis. Like listen to the way she's talking. This isn't borderline. Borderlines don't have like like you know what I mean this feels very different all these stories about my healing journey and more Mm. depth but not too much and just trying to inspire other people to go on because yeah she mentioned reality she mentioned saving the world she mentioned a lot no not NPD I don't think she's a narcissist that doesn't sound right she sounds really sad huh their own healing journey so they can be their most authentic self and live their most aligned life so this distracts me where every day i'm working towards that but it's not as lucrative as you were saying you had to stack up before you really focus on this beautiful show that serves so many people so i have the same goal i want to help as many people as possible yeah to change their lives so like you're doing i am so supportive of it so Yeah, I wonder what it could be. I don't want to like, again, I don't know. Like, I'm not a mental health professional. I don't know nothing. Um, But yeah, she seems something. Like, rattled is a good word, Chance. She might be rattled in this interview since she's being put under the microscope. Maybe. Yeah. 
Um, Discord says, as a mental health professional, I see it. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the online woo-woo bubbles have talked about suffering from a spiritual psychosis. She's clinging onto delusions for sure. That is my greatest concern, even when I talk about my stuff. And thank goodness I haven't like curated an audience who falls into that bubble. But it's like, yeah, there's like a spiritual psychosis that happens in a lot of these spiritual woo-woo bubbles that's severely disturbing to me because, again, I want to ground you as much as possible. Um, and I've seen it in people. They they seem to have like a break. And I wonder if she's just experiencing that right now. That's a huge bummer, bro. Yeah, do you think he's noticing? I think he's definitely sensing something is up for sure. Support of the desire, everything like that. Uh, just to just bring my devil's advocate and just more like the world just screaming at me. It. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I live in too much light. <laughs> Not too much. Oh, girl. Well, I started the show as a hobby and just enjoying the topic and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I think I had the one in a million chance where just I just got lucky. I got lucky. The show took off. Thousands of YouTubers start every single day. Mm -hmm. the vast majority never make it and i was just so true. blessed enough to have the support thank you true of everyone out there and the show has taken off and i've been able to build employees and you know runs an office and all this stuff and it's super exciting yeah what happens in the statistical and again i want this to be successful i don't want you to take this as me being against it being successful i'm a contrarian too. but what do you do <laughs> if in the statistical likelihood it's not successful and right now we have negative oh great question um Anisha says, don't you think of her as a susceptible to joining a cult? I just hear that people who have this sort of spiritual psychosis are more susceptible to it. Yeah, I think so. I definitely agree with that. <clears throat> I think um, I, I do think that's a possibility. I think she probably felt has fallen into not a literal cult, but like spiritual bubble where she's like, I'm manifesting. I have too much light. I have so much goodness. It's why, again, I really want to make it clear that my work, as much as I love like woo woo bubbles, I want to ground us into what is like actually true versus what we hope is true. And I really like, I personally don't have very magical experiences. I don't have anything that I don't think is just like rooted in like probably some universal biology. Like I don't, I don't personally have an experience. Like I don't use words like this in my daily life. Like I have so much light and like manifest and like I don't really believe in any of that stuff I just think like you, you know you can use these words to say very reasonable things or you can use these words to say very irresponsible and irres ir um, ir illogical things but I think it's in her case she's using them very like unsafe you know and so again I'm all about like manifesting as long as you mean I'm doing work to get good work back as long as you're saying like something reasonable but she even said like i've manifested the world taking care of me because that's how i function the best probably not right probably not right you probably don't function the best by making everyone around you take care of you i'm gonna say that's probably not the answer and we want to get you to healthy again we're a philosophy channel not a mental health channel and i think she's having a mental health crisis so i would definitely seek out a proper therapist um but again in order the problem is like she's kind of functional and that's what's so scary. Even my friend who went underwent weed related psychosis, there was a part of them that seemed very functional. And then it was only to like their close family and friends that they were like, hey, something seems off. You know, that people were like, hey, I'm concerned for you. But, you know, that's the dilemma is like, there's sort of a functionality, even when you're sick, you can be functional. So people often disregard you, even doctors, even if you ask sometimes a doctor, like, I'm really in pain, I really need help. Doctors would be like, you're just a woman, it's your period, you're cramping, you're silly, it's in your head. Like, the problem is, is like, if you're lucky, <clears throat> excuse me, you actually get a chance to meet somebody who will help you. And so this is just kind of really sad. It's hard for me to even make fun of her now, because like, obviously like this is a this is like real mental health you know you know what is psychosis like I don't know I've never well, I've never had it um but my friend who had it says it's literally like being awake in a world that isn't real so you think everything is happening for real real but it's not happening so you genuinely believe everything because it's so real but it's not actually happening. And so it's very scary because then you can't like, what's the differences? Um, <clears throat> but I've never had psychosis, so I don't know. But it seems like 
I think if I went through it now, I'd be able to like logically rationalize its psychosis. But I don't know that because everyone I've talked to who's had it says it's very hard to know. So it's pretty difficult. You know what I mean? It's very interesting. We get money in our checking account. And we're not paying on our credit cards and we don't have enough save in retirement to survive and we're going to die on the Walmart floor. What, what do we do? <laughs> what, what do we do in that scenario, though? Like, how long do you push for this? Here's the thing. We make a plan, which I have been avoiding uh, because the suicidal thoughts are like, no, we're in survival mode. We'll just make sure, you know, if that happens, 988, call the number. Very important. Um, Thank you, Logic. Yes, uh, just always making sure we're taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. I want you to survive at the same time. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to finances. So yeah, well, and that's where these numbers are f***ed up because I didn't give you too much of a breakdown on some other like um, expenses. But a lot of that are like supplements that I think are going to like save me. Save um, you? Yeah. Like, you know, magnesium. Liposomal glutathione. Oh. And all this shit that actually, if you made a routine, Amber, if you woke up a little earlier and you're objectively you healthier than me, I don't, I don't know what to say on it, dude. I appreciate that. Oh. So I'm this is why I believe in divine timing. Everything uh -oh. is a divine appointment. Ooh. The timing of me being invited on your show could not have been better because the inner work is caught up. And now we're ready for the external reality to reflect the internal. So I will literally do anything you say. No, you won't. It's hard being a human, bros. Humans are going to human it is very hard being a person. It's very hard dealing with this kind of stuff. Like, I don't mean to make it bigger than it is, but like, I think my heart's kind of going out for her. This is like, it's kind of sad. Now I'm kind of sad. Bro. Fuck. This is kind of sad. Oh. It depends if Mac approves. Oh, okay. Well, God. so what is it? If if Mac the dog farts, is that an approval? Or like, what did that indicate earlier? No, hey, we Mac? have a psychic connection and our nervous systems are co-regulated. So anything I oh, okay. feel, he feels, yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of reality, let's talk about Navy Federal. No. Um, that one's negative $6, I think, right now. No, we're talking about the checking account. Or we're talking about the credit card, not the checking account. Oh, gross. Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, first, let's just start. Credit card people are people who know how to manage credit cards, can manage credit cards, take advantage of credit cards. This credit card is taking advantage of you. You are not a credit card person by any means whatsoever. No. Never hold one again. Close these counts immediately. Okay. Noted. I will do that. You know, I think his attitude's actually helping her a bit ground her because he's not overreacting to her, which I think is probably really good, you know? Uh, but yeah. My girl going through it. Make a payment. Oh, no. And we're over the credit limit of $9.94. And we're having interest charge of $7.42. The usual minimum monthly payment is $20. Cool. That's awesome. But you didn't pay it. That's Why so little. You yes, it's so little. Why did you not pay it? Why did you not pay it? Yeah. Okay. This is clearly a dissociation issue. Oh. I uh oh. Mm. Uh oh. I associated from these accounts that I'm not even keeping a schedule of when anything needs to get paid and I'm pretending like just put it on I'm auto pay okay. dissociate d associate yourself with auto pay yeah, use AI use AI problem solve with AI yeah she, she's talking like Kanye like she talks like it's very psychosis -y. again I'm not a therapist I'm just a person who's dealt with loved ones and people close to me who have had like similar manic -y moments. And so again, like lots of love, like lots of care. I wish she had better resources. I hope she has somebody who loves her and can take care of her. I really wanna make it clear because look, I usually do make fun of a lot of people I review and I think a lot of those things are warranted, but like I can't quite make fun of her anymore because like she's not rooted in like, you know, I just feel like she's a little too far gone 
for me to feel within reason to criticize her too much. Like I, this is to me, this is a huge mental health problem for me. Like this isn't someone I could like, I would, I don't care about anything she's doing. I don't care about her bills. I don't care about anything. Cause none of that matters. Like we need to get her stable mentally. So to me personally, if she was my friend, I wouldn't even hold it against her that she's like not doing things. I would say, Hey, we need to fix your, we need to ground you. Like she's not grounded. For me, this is not a person you can hold accountable because she's not even here right now, right? Like I, I don't know if I could consider this person here. To me, this isn't like, she. it's like talking to an intoxicated person. Like you can't hold them accountable till they're sober. So she needs to like, in my mind, like get sober, right? In a mental health sense. Yes. <laughs> What? No, I've been needing someone to look at me like this. Why? Why does no one ever tell you reality? Are you surrounded with yes men because you're pretty or people? Well, no, it's probably because like nobody knows anything about mental health because nobody probably knows anything, right? They're just, they probably don't even know. Lots of people don't know anything about, like they probably just don't know. Just nice and not telling you anything. Yes, you look great. You look fantastic. Congratulations. But because of that, are people <laughs> just <gonna> like, <laughs> are people just like not willing to tell you the truth or what? I mean, you tell me, or do you even know? I are you mean, telling me no one's ever told you before that? Hey, guess what? Pay a credit card. Minimum monthly balance. Yeah, what's really beautiful in my life is that I have a mixture of what you just said. I have like, for example, my mindset and healing coach who will text me random. Like, you know, you need, yeah. All these coaches and stuff got to stop taking money from her. Like it's so unethical to take money from this person. Like she needs to go to the right therapy and stabilize herself. It's so sad, bro. If she was my caller, I'd be like, you're getting a refund. You need to go to therapy. Like, I would not take her as a caller. I would give her a refund and tell her, like, you need to talk to somebody else. Like, you need to talk to a real a real person who can help you. Yeah, I think it's super unethical to take money from this person. You need, like, a schedule and you need, like, to set an, a monthly goal of how much money to make. And I'm like, oh, didn't text her back. And then there are people. Why? Why? Why did you not text her back? Don't just move on. <sighs> okay. Why did you not text her back? She was bringing reality, even though she's coming from whatever, uh, well, crystals or something. But just, <laughs> just she <laughs> she was telling you, like, yo, girl, money exists and you need it to survive in this world. We didn't text her back because. Fear. Fear of. Success. I, okay. Okay. I need you to. It's going to. Uh, you need to talk to your therapist about that one. Therapist, one that has studied the science behind mental health. No, my coach is great. Kat's great. Fantastic, but, but you're you right. Text her back. So I need you to talk <laughs> to your therapist. Just this one time, bro. You're right. Address the fear of success with my yes, EMDR. And then therapist. figure it out, but also don't use it as a mm. crutch. Don't just be like, okay, fear of success, fear of success. So I'm never going to do this. Yeah. Okay, figure it out. Figure out different coping mechanisms around. Okay, I will say the difference though, because Bray, you're saying she's got the boogie problem. She listens to the help, but won't take it. But Boogie isn't going through psychosis. And not that she is, but Boogie isn't having a manic episode. Boogie is in reality. He's only just, like, I don't, like, to me, this woman isn't saying, like, she's literally giving me, like, like, she's not triggered. I don't even think she is processing reality, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, like, exaggerating it. But, like, to me, this woman isn't even, this isn't even a trigger. This woman is is app like she reminds me so much of people I've known who have gone through like any version of psychosis. You know, like Boogie's insane in his own way, but he's not like outside of reality. And I mean, he's outside of reality, but she's outside of reality. You know, I don't know how to explain it, but like this woman is something. Like there's something much harder she's facing in a way. We can't know for sure. Hmm it uh work with your therapist to get past that obviously i cannot do that i'm not a mental health person but what i will not accept is we sit down in five years and then i hear the same thing yeah you need to work on that i really appreciate that because with all the other trauma i've been through i've mm -hmm. actually been focusing on like other like child abuse sexual assault all that and so that's kind of been the focus with the therapist because that's what's felt like it's been 
that's what's been weighing on me the and most. I don't want you to think that but, I'm not sympathetic. I'm just not oh, a mental no. health person. So it's like, it yeah. doesn't make sense for me to talk about. No, that. that's actually exactly what I needed to hear because here I am avoiding what would problem solve like immediately in my life. If I were to actually talk to my therapist on Friday and be like, Hey, let's leave the daddy issues to the side for now. How about we go into the sphere of success and magnetism and being violated again that I yeah. have that's preventing me from making money. So thank you. I'll do that Friday. So obviously you're going to have to uh, talk to the therapist mm -hmm. on that stuff. And we're going to have to work through with the therapist on that. I want to get your just perspectives on life just before we go into this. Just so I know who I'm talking to for a second. Okay. Okay. A credit card. This is something you've spent other people's money. Now there's a lot of evil credit card companies out there. Sure. Take advantage mm -hmm. of people. Sure. But you spent the money. Now mm -hmm. you have to pay it. You're not paying it. What are your perspectives on credit cards and paying it back money that you borrowed? <sighs> this always takes me deeper <laughs> than the actual issue at hand. I, the way my mind works is I go to like the systemic issues of this world and I don't want to like use. I can't, I can't, I'm having a hard time engaging with her because I just don't think she's like normal sick. Like I think there are spectrums. Like I've never been this sick in my whole life and I've been sick. But I've never been this sick. There's just something I don't know. But it, she's giving me. It's just sad. Like I kind of want to cry. Like I'm. I'm a pretty grounded person. You know what I'm saying? Like she. She just doesn't feel grounded to me. Like Boogie's not even this sick. You know what I'm saying? Like people are sick. But like I've never been this sick. Like I don't have. I don't have a separation. From reality in this way. Right. So she just doesn't sound. She doesn't sound grounded. She doesn't sound like reasonable. Like she doesn't sound like she's here. She sounds like she's tripping. Uh, it sounds like she's in a mushroom trip. And I'm like, bro. It's not like. Maybe it's my own little bubble, but like if my friend was talking like this, none of this matters. Like, I don't care about your money. I don't care about your finances. Like you have bigger problems going on. I feel like you have much bigger problems going on than whether or not you're paying your credit card bill. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels like she has much bigger problems going on than whether or not she's paying her credit card bill. Even when you have borderline, no, no offense to my borderline, you still got to pay your credit card bill, whether you have borderline or not. But for her, I genuinely kind of feel like I don't care about your credit card bill, girl. You need to get, you need anti psych meds or something. Even at my worst, I still have to pay my bills. You know what I mean? I still paid my credit card bill on time. I still paid my shit. But it's different. Boogie misses his bills because he's arrogant. I feel like she's on a different planet. You know what I mean? Um, I think she might need actual help. I don't think she can do it with introspection. So that's why I think I'm being more sympathetic to her right now. I don't think her problem is introspection. I think it's medication. I have a feeling she's not on the right meds. Uh, maybe. I'm not a mental health professional. I don't know. But this doesn't feel or look like a person who just needs to be introspective. This looks like somebody who needs some anti-psych meds or something. Because I love to claim responsibility for the way that my life is to a certain extent. To a certain extent. Yeah. But systemically, the way that the world is set up to oppress certain groups of people, I feel f oppressed as Why are you? Okay. My friend who underwent psychosis, one of the things that tipped me off that they were being weird was they talked about saving the world, but they also talked about oppression, but different than they've ever talked about it before. So to somebody else, and again, I could be so wrong, but to somebody else, it sounds like she's just talking about politics, but the way she's talking about it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound like a typical SJW having their moment. She's doing something different. That's what my friend was doing. My friend was talking about like saving the planet and mentioning certain political things. And I was like, you sound different. This doesn't sound like my friend, the activist. This sounds like my friend on a different planet. And I quickly contacted their family, quickly contacted people. I quickly like went to go see them. And I was right. Like, again, they it sounds normal. So again, I could be so wrong. I'm just using my lived experience as an example of why I feel this way. Because like, 
it sounds like they're just talking about politics. But if you know somebody and you know how normal, common, grounded, reasonable people talk about politics, there's a difference between being triggered and talking about politics and there's a difference between being like on a different planet. So for me, the reason I can't engage or make fun of her at this moment is like I'm getting the vibe that she's like, this is an introspection issue, right? This is like a severe mental health issue. And so for me, my concern is like she's doing that same thing. I could be so wrong. I definitely know this is a real person. I don't want to paint her this way. And I almost never make claims like this on the internet because it's so serious. But my like for you guys, so you because you're watching me, I just in my deepest heart of hearts, my deepest heart of hearts, I feel like our girl is really going through it. Um, and she just reminds me so much. Yeah, it's like the way they're talking is so similar. It's like to anyone else, it just sounds like politics. But to me, I'm like, that's not how normal people talk about politics. There's something about the way she's talking. You know, she's making it so like she's main charactering herself so much. I'm wondering if she thinks she's Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? She's main charactering herself to such an extent that I'm like, oh, you're doing it. You're doing it like you think you might be Jesus. Like, I'm a little worried that at some time in this podcast, she might say something like, I think I'm a I'm Jesus, like reincarnated. That's why that's the concern is like, but you don't really think that, right? Like, you don't really think that, right? You know what I mean? You oppressed. That being a woman in this world and someone who wants to go to court for yeah. somebody who wants to speak out about the abuses of power in this whole world, banks are an abuse of power. Sure. And you should against against your own life and experiences <laughs> you've had. Sure. But credit cards. I'm talking about credit cards here. The thing with the credit cards is I accept responsibility that I should not have taken that money out. F funny story is about a thousand ish dollars of those credit card bills was caused. Mm, okay. It was my fault, but I trusted a man on seeking arrangements.com who said, that Oh, Oh, <clears throat> that he would give me like $5,000 if we went on a date together. And he was like, like a sugar daddy. I want you to get all done up for the date. I want you to get your lashes done. I want you to get your toes. Oh, mm. I want you to get this laundry. I want you to get all this gross. We don't, we don't do that unless you get the money up front. I know everyone tells me that <laughs> they're like, you know, you're supposed to get the money first. I was like, I'm a trusting person. Why? I don't know. She reminds me of Gabby Hanna. Poor Gabby. She reminds me of Gabby. You know, Gabby went home to her family's um, neighborhood or her, her old town, which is good. And she's working on herself, apparently. She reminds me of Gabby. Poor Gabby. Yeah, she reminds me of Gabby. It makes me sad. Mental health is so real. Oh, but here I am spending all this thinking he's going to pay me back. And then we don't even go on the date. So there I am with more credit card debt than I knew what to do do with. And I just started dissociating more because look, there I was again. Relying do you feel on you owe it back? Me. You know, it's kind of like with the student loans. I don't want to pay the back. Want to? Oh, want? Okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to pay student debt. Student loans. I don't want to pay that back. Are you? Are you going to? Right now, I think I'm on forbearance because I make so little money. Yeah. So like on an income. Girl, ma'am. His reactions are taking me out. Caleb's reactions are great. Yeah, it says, right, I always feel bad when I start out like, ha ah, she's out of her damn mind. And then it turns out, oh, no, wait, she's out of her damn mind. I know, same. I feel bad now. Definitely, damn. Yeah, she reminds me of, of Gabby Hanna. It's so easy to make fun of Gabby. It's so easy. But then when you really look at her and you realize like, oh, sis, you out of your mind. Uh, my bad. My bad. I don't really want to make fun of people who are literally out of their minds. Like, that sucks. That's just like a shitty place to be in. I wouldn't want any of my loved ones to be in that position. Like genuinely, I really want to make that clear. Like if I genuinely think you're out of your mind, like I'm not going to make fun of you, dude. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if you've heard recently and I don't want to go too deep into this. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. A conspiracy theory, question mark? What is she about to say? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. There is a professor from Stanford who had to share what he learned about free will. Okay. In this world. Oh, and he God. Is she talking about Robert? 
concluded, and he did not want to share this information. He concluded that there is no free will. The Are you talking about Robert? <laughs> way that these abuses of power and these systems are set up to keep about? people what? down to keep women did he disconnected. go through the full scientific method was it peer reviewed did, did it go through everything yeah, he's stanford well that doesn't mean anything he could be a history professor from stanford i don't know That's true. he could be teaching band concert band from stanford he could be talking about, what do you what do you mean he's from stanford that doesn't mean anything to me i don't care about a mm. college or institution what's his background yeah, is it peer reviewed did he go through this full <laughs> did, did he go through the scientific method like, what is this? Or was he just a dude that posted a blog? Like, well, again, that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, he wrote this into a book. Have you ever seen Westworld? Yeah. It's basically Westworld, Great first dude. season. I know. They canceled it because Westworld knew what was up. Oh. The Bibi. Habibi. 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 Like, girl. Now, we all got our own POVs. We all need to see the world differently. So I would love to awaken people to the fact that, yes, systemically. Well, tell me this thing. You were, you, you're very big on this, and you're using that as an excuse to not have uh, the choices in your own life and mm. things. No, no, no. So tell me. Tell <laughs> me. Did it come through an actual scientific study? Have other people pushed back on it? What's the context? Because I don't know the context. You're the one that brought it up here. So tell me. Where did it come from? What is his what is his professor role? What's his name? That's what's annoying me right now. Okay, so we can't land... re we can't read a headline and say that because this is this is what everyone like on Twitter does. You read a headline and mm. then that's reality. Yeah, like, come on. Then Trump ended you up in office. But you can't even like talk about it. You can't even talk about the study. This is study. another thing I dissociated from. I'm not gonna lie. I saw that headline. Like I read like half the article. From, like reality so far. Yeah. God. That was that was it really I'm sorry. Hurt. I apologize. It's not. That mean. That's that's real. That's mean. I'm just getting frustrated. I, that's why. I... Ooh, it's, see, this feels too real. Damn, rip, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I give people real talk too, so I love getting it back. It's its own form of love. It is. So, it's it's how I it's how I prefer to have conversations. To me, if people, good. I, I need people to sit me down and just like. Yeah. Get yeah. it right, dude. I like you slapping me silly with your words right now. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. So oh, yeah. thank you for going on this roller coaster with me. But yes, there is a really. It's 40 minutes and we talked about one debt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, says that was pretty accurate. I don't think he realizes how spot on he was. And then she said, yeah, it's true. That's the problem. I feel like we just witnessed like a really honest moment, right? He was like, I feel like you're out of this world. I'm sorry, that's rude. And she goes, no, it's true. And I feel like. Yeah. I feel like it is true, girl. No purchases. Seven dollars. Oh, we made a. Okay, come on. Come on. You made a payment. Come on. Oh, thank you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I needed that high five. <laughs> Absolutely. We made a payment and you're below the credit limit. That's great. Maybe she's just on drugs. Could she be on ecstasy? Because, like, when he touched her just now, hold on. Wait. Look at her. Right. Okay, Third I'm saying drugs or psychosis. Look at this. We made a. Okay, come on. Come on. You made a payment. Come on. Oh, thank you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I needed that high five. Is she on ecstasy? Maybe she's on drugs. I think she might be on edibles. Okay, so it's either extreme mental health or she's on drugs, like lots of drugs. What is it? Is she going through psychosis or is it we? Is it like an edible? Is it psychosis or is it drugs? Like something is something is like wrong. Something is wrong. I hope she's on drive. I hope she didn't drive here today. <laughs> Absolutely. We made a payment and you're below the credit limit. That's great. $38 of interest charge. That sucks. Uh, Every month? Yeah. Yeah. 430 I stole from you this year so far. $28 of fees. We must have missed the payment at some point. It's all, it's all gonna be paid off. It's all gonna be paid off. The money's on its way. The money's on its way. Could be both. Zoom in on her pimp, uh, pupils. Wait, you, you have abundant songs you sing to yourself. She's She got black eyes. I can't tell. I can't tell nothing. At night? No, I go make money. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was a good burn. Holy <laughs> That's what I'm gonna hear when I go to what bed tonight. 
What is this? No, is, I make money. What is your life? Is, is it the, the uh, what? Wear your pajamas on the bottom bunk, jump, jump like five times and you get a snow day tomorrow? That's not how this works. I know. My my life has been snow a Snow day happens when, uh-oh, snow comes. You can't manifest it by jumping on a bed. The money comes is, when you go get it, not when you go, yes. oh, gosh, money's coming. Oh, yes. I hope money's coming. What, is that the song you sang? <laughs> is that what I do now? It's a little cuter than that, but. I'm thinking of getting. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm thinking of getting a Tesla, but I don't really want to spend money on it. Oh, let's get a Tesla. I hope I get a Tesla. Okay, oh well, my like, goodness, get that was what money was happening. from a tree. Give yes. me the Tesla. Like visualize the Tesla. Okay. It's or on maybe its way. I just make an extra episode. Yeah. Day drinking and Coke. That's the vibe, you know? Instead of psychos, is it could be day drinking and Coke. But I've I don't know, man. Maybe. I won't lie. That's how it was. That's completely how it was. Oh, Amber says this does not read as Coke to me. Hmm. For like a year, I would have all these people telling me like, you're going to do big things. Like you're going to help so many people. And mm. I internalized that. And I was like, okay, well then future sounds set to me in the present. Let's just continue being comfortable. Let's comfortable. sit you're in. You're comfortable? You're comfortable with this? I'd be freaking oh, out every second of my life. For that too. When you're raised in a childhood home that is chaotic and you only know like that scary discomfort what as do you a mean? child. I was getting foreclosure. No There's no way microdosing would do this, bro. I microdosed on shrooms. I didn't, I felt great, bro. Microdosing does not mean being impacted. If you're microdosing, I don't think it should show. I feel like if you're microdosing, like nobody should be able to tell you're on drugs. Not even you. It sounds like a lot of psychosis, though. I don't know, bro. Yeah, God, I don't know. She needs therapy. She's in lots of therapy. That's the problem. She is in therapy. If you go to the wrong therapist, it will make you worse. That's the problem. If you go to the wrong doctor, it will make you worse. If you go to the wrong professional, it will make you worse. If you go wrong to the wrong physical professional, it, like, you have to go to the right professionals. So like, it doesn't matter that she's like, she doesn't need therapy. She needs the right kind of therapist. The, her problem is not getting into therapy. Her problem is finding the right therapist. No, this is on my house as a child. Hmm. When I was born, my dad was a gas station clerk and my mom was like a receptionist at like an eye place or something like that. They didn't make money. They didn't make money. We couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't really do things. They borrowed, they borrowed money to make it feel like I was middle class. Mm -hmm. But that's why I became passionate about personal finance. Well, let's not mm -hmm. use, uh, again, things outside of mm -hmm. our control, especially assault or anything like that. Yes, a billion percent. But let's use things we've learned in the past if we grew up in a dysfunctional household to be like, oh, Maybe I don't want my household in the future to be dysfunctional. Why was it dysfunctional? Yeah. These reasons. Let's not be that. Mm -hmm. Foreclosure notices on the house. I don't want that. What caused it? I'm not going to do that. Yes, that's beautiful. You were able to see what you didn't want. And then you worked but towards you a different ending. In my own way, yeah, I'm doing the work to not be like essentially how my childhood home was so yeah. my inner work is making sure that when I interact with people they feel loved they feel seen they feel heard and so okay. the thing is growing up I was never talked to about money if I ever sure. asked yeah. How much yeah Bryson good point I do not believe she's in therapy first of all the cost and second of all she's a healer she may go to someone who does that she said she's seen therapists so she either lied or she's seeing somebody she calls a therapist who's actually like a healer of some kind right what do you guys think Fire says, this is why professionals study people over a long period of time before finding a diagnosis. We need to hear, we need to see her for a month from now and two months from now to see what she's normally like. That's true. I mean, my therapist pegged me on the first day, but you know, everyone's different. That's another controversial par part of the, the diagnosis process is like my therapist diagnosed me like day one, but it was, I think it was the right diagnosis. Like, I think she pegged me correctly because the therapy fucking helped. Everything changed in my life. So everyone's like a little different with their diagnosis journey. Um, but yeah, you would have to see like, what is she like and what are the symptoms and how much she's willing to tell herself. Um, Rock says I was identical to this girl before getting help for my CPTSD. This chat has me dying. Like, oh my gosh, people could have been, I was drunk. Wait, could have been, I was drunk on Coke, edibles, manic, having psychosis. I mean, girl, trauma is crazy. Also being raised in scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. It's been really 
something weird because I'm trying to choose on a daily basis mm. abundance. Like I'll I'll joke with you about abundance and manifestation, but, you but know what it's real. real abundance is? Actually having it in the bank. Yeah, being able to do it, man. Yeah, I think people who are like uneducated but also like um going through it, they cling to these things. Which is why often, and I agree with this, that like coaching bubbles, guru bubbles, they often do prey on very sick people, which is why, again, like I want to be clear that I do not do any of this thing. I'm not a healer. I just am a person. I'm a YouTuber. I make content and I offer my time, but I am not a coach. I am not a healer. I'm not a guru. I think calling me those things are just people who are trying to discredit because they don't like want to just admit I'm just a YouTuber like everybody else. But that's all I am. Like, this is, like, why I am so suspicious of coaching circles, of all these things. Because, again, they tend to prey on, like, really sick people. And she's sick. No healer should be working with her. Everyone should be, like, not taking this woman's money. This woman needs to go to a therapist. The only person who should take her for, you know, her money is a therapist. And a therapist who can actually help her. Like, I hope her therapists are referring her to people who can actually help her. Yeah, because every she's saying all the woo-woo words. She's saying all the woo-woo words. And because yeah. what you're doing is what you're doing is you're actually pushing off real abundance. You're preventing it by just being in a hole that's going to be harder and harder to dig out of the longer and longer you go mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be in it. Man, if I can get you to a point where you're budgeting, where we're bringing in solid income in a job that we're feeling passionate about for doing that, you're mm -hmm. abundant on the nine to five, you're abundant on what you're doing afterwards where you're putting money. It yeah. doesn't have to be a suffering type thing. No. But right now you're kicking the can down the road and you're preventing yeah. actual abundance. The frustration and it goes back to the beginning of not wanting to participate in a capitalistic society. It's like- But you don't have a choice. Exactly. If I want to live here and I want to change this country, I have to participate in capitalism so I can change it from the inside out. So what the dream has been, and I know it's coming to fruition, is I'm going to have a mother show just like okay. you and it's going to help with I hope people. So. I hope but so. I have to do both. I have a to do that the shit I've been below. avoiding. Absolutely. But here I am actually now realizing, okay, Amber, you can help other people, but you have to help yourself first. And I've been avoiding that. Every time I'm feeling lonely or scared or anxious, I go online and I'll post a story yeah. telling my story, hoping that it helps somebody else. But then I'm avoiding taking care of myself. And then I try to get other people to. Is she a one? No, she's mentally ill, bro. Like something is severely wrong. She's not a one. Like this is, see how like easily I could be like, this is not a one, bro. She's just ill. Like this is mental health. Like this is like, this isn't ill. This isn't interest. This isn't a problem with introspection. This is not an introspection problem. <laughs> Is this a mental health problem or like drugs or something is wrong? I try to get my partner to take care of me. In the past, it was random sugar daddies. Sometimes it's my dad. Girl, the trauma girl. Sometimes it's, the list can go on. Yeah. So I, for sure Z's do not want to live like this anymore. So I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. And it, ah, it feels scary, but I think it's also excitement, but I know, I know, I know that what would you say in your opinion, would you say like 20 hours a week on the passion work and then 20 hours a week on the money making work? No, or no, what no, do you no. think? It's, if the passion brings in the money, then we're all in on the money for surgeries. It will. But if, well, okay. I hope so. I hope so. It will. Well, it, we can't, we're not gambling. Okay. We're not getting, <laughs> we're adults. We live in reality. I hope it works. But we're adults with dreams. Yes. And dreams are dreams. Reality is reality. So, you wake up from a dream and you are enter reality on a daily basis. So what worked for you? Kashmir says sometimes a coach or a guru can be good, but they can't replace a therapist or real life. Well, I think they're different categories, but people think they replace them. And that's the problem. But also like be aware of scammers and be aware, be aware of that stuff. 
Um, Vegan says, to be fair, you do kind of seem like how I've seen coaches present themselves. Not saying that's how you would classify that. I can see why people would get that impression. I understand the association, but also I don't get it because like the coaching people I know are so different than me, but maybe it's because of how I feel about myself. Like, I just don't feel like it relates to coaching or what I would say is coaching. But I guess like, like, I don't care if you title me that as long as like, it, it's not like some, again, I don't know very many good coaches. Like, I only know like the scamming coaches and scamming gurus. So I'm sure there are some who aren't doing that, but I don't know of many, even the very rich, famous ones that everyone references, like they're kind of scammers. So like, I'm not a big fan of being associated with that word, but I, I, if, it, if people mean it in a positive way, like a neutral way, then maybe there's a bubble where that makes sense. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Star said, just remember this is a finance show and we've barely heard anything about finances. My girl, you know, that's why I think Boogie is a one and she's just mentally ill. Because even though Boogie's mentally ill, he's introspective enough to do better. But she's like, she needs, she's got mental health problems first. First and foremost, mental health. I don't, her introspection level is like just not important right now. What's important is that she's mentally ill, right? You said you had to save up 12K before you felt yeah, comfortable yeah, 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 working yeah. on your Before show. I felt comfortable jumping ship, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Completely. But were you Completely. at part time on the show? Uh, Yeah. Uh, like well, pretty much. I mean, well, the thing is, if you're passionate about something, there is no, there's like no off time, right? Yeah. So if you're working the nine to five, then you're working the five to nine. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I mean, that's just how it was. When I first did the show, I didn't have the people sitting behind you right now. I didn't have a producer. I went out and found everyone to be on the show. I didn't have an editor. I did it all myself. You work mm -hmm. the job and then weekends and everything. Yui says, you don't think mental health and introspection have a correlation? Did I say that? I kind of, ha I have free lacking introspection can add into one severity of mental health. I just think they're different. So, of course, they overlap. But, like, her introspection level doesn't matter right now. She's mentally ill. She can't think. She can't think straight. She's either drunk or impaired, right? Who cares what a drunk guy's introspection level is? He's drunk. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it doesn't matter what introspection level you are. You're impaired, right? Your impairment makes it so your introspection level is basically moot, right? Like if you're in a coma, who cares what your introspection level is? If you're asleep, who cares what your introspection level is? That's what I'm saying. So obviously things affect everything. But first and foremost, if the thing you're dealing with is louder than your ability to think, how introspective can you be, right? I don't care about our introspection level right now because like, you're kind of impaired. You know what I mean? That's how I think about it, you know? Um, oh, like talking about tools sounds like coaching to me. I don't see how coaching as automatically negative. Yeah, I think there are probably some coaches that are fine. But I, for me, like that's a very specific bubble. And I don't think it's what I'm doing. Because again, like I'm not selling you a course. I'm not even selling you the calls. You don't have to do them. You can just watch my content. But like coaches most likely are coaches have if I was a coach, I would be failing my business model is why I don't call myself a coach, because if I was a coach, I'd be doing completely different things with my business model. That's that's the only reason I don't feel like a coach, because genuinely, if I was going down the coach route, you guys, my shit would be so different. My content would not even look the same. There's no way I wouldn't even bring up the levels. If I was doing coaching, I wouldn't even talk about the levels. That's why I do philosophy because I don't want to, I would, if I was doing coaching, like I would not bring up the levels. I wouldn't bring up any of my philosophy stuff. It would be so different. That's the only reason I don't think of myself as a coach. Like I wouldn't, I'm branding myself horribly if I'm a coach. You know what I mean? Mental illness is like a fog. Even if you have introspection, you can't really see through life well. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important to do the mental health stuff. You know what I mean? And also, again, you're getting food stamps because you're choosing not to work. You're like actually yeah. choosing. It's been a subconscious thing that's finally at the surface of, hey, you know, all these fears are the reasons that you're distracting yourself with all this other shit. So the storylines were like, oh, I'm not healthy enough to work. Oh, I've just been through some trauma. I need to heal before I can start working. So that's how it was for month after month after month. And then week after week, you're like, okay, I'll start on that new gig Monday. 
oh, well, you know, now it's Thursday. Let's try again for this Monday. And I'm, I was procrastinating my life mm -hmm. to the point where now the numbers are clear. I can't do that anymore. And I'm sick. I'm so sick of getting support from other people, but I'm blessed enough that my show with the five episodes that I have right now have apparently helped people. Yes. And so yes. I that is the most rewarding thing. Yeah. Mm. It really is. When you get that feedback. Yeah. No, like, it really is. If people change, my... change their lives, that it is the best thing. Yeah. It's I don't know if helping people is the best thing. I just feel like. I feel like that's I feel like that's also a cope, but whatever. Um, some coaches are also content creators. That is a fact. That is very true. Yui says, well, I think the re I think her level of introspection is important because maybe if she becomes aware of what's holding her back, she could even get a glimpse of something a little bit more clear. That's a mental health issue, bro. Her mental health is OK. So in my mind, everyone is different. How do you get sober without being sober? Like you have to know what sober is to also move towards a goal of being sober. So because she doesn't know what's happening with her mental health, she can't introspect something she's not qualified to introspect. Do you get what I'm saying? She would need to go to the right kind of therapist and get the right kind of meds to tackle this thing so she could have a clear enough brain to introspect. She can't face a problem she's having if she can't look past the fog. So her introspection isn't going to help her unless she can get the tools which are outside of her professional scope, outside of her knowledge. Like she, she can't introspect past something. Like I can get myself into therapy. I was not the one who drove myself to therapy, right? I do. I did not get myself into therapy. My partner at the time and his mother are the ones who encouraged me to go to therapy and he drove me to my therapy. I did not go to therapy. I was, it was very hard for me to get into the car and drive to therapy, right? Because I could not introspect to the point of like being self-aware enough. I was so in my misery, right? So you would have to go to therapy to dismantle that thinking, to go to therapy, to like figure out what to do. Yeah, I did not take myself to, I've told this story before. I did not take myself to therapy. I made the decision to go to therapy. That was my decision, but I couldn't get myself to go. I did, I made the decision, of course, because I was told like, hey, you have to go to therapy. Something's wrong. And I was like, you're right. Something's wrong. I lost my job. I never lose my jobs. So when I made the decision to go to therapy, I emailed all the therapists myself. I did all of the groundwork, but I could not physically get myself out of the house to drive myself. So my, my partner at the time would drive me to therapy for all of my appointments. And yeah, it was my toxic. I mean, all my relationships were toxic. But my, uh, my toxic ex did take me, right? Like he took me to therapy. He thought the therapy would make me pick him in the end. And the irony is the therapy made me realize I have to break up with him, which is the funniest part. But yeah, he took me to therapy. I could not get myself out the door. I could email all the therapists. I could email everybody. But getting myself like out the door was very difficult, right? So that is a huge part of what's so difficult about getting there because emailing all the therapists was like easiest, hard, but like the easiest part in terms of Brittany's struggle, I had a huge trouble getting outside the front door. A huge problem. Like I knew something was wrong because I lost my job. So I was self-aware, but I still had the hardest time getting myself to the doctor, you know? I'm actually feeling really grateful he took you even though he was toxic. Me too. Well, toxic people aren't all bad. That's what I'm trying. I want to make this so clear. With all of my heart, I mean this. Just because you're toxic doesn't mean you're all bad. When I call you toxic, it doesn't mean you're the worst person in the world. It doesn't mean you're bad through and through. My ex, all my exes, had plenty of redeeming qualities. 
they just weren't enough. Okay. But like, they weren't enough. They never went past that. And some of them ended up in pretty bad places. But I'm really lucky that regardless of how toxic they were, they got me out the front door. He got me out the front door. And he would drive me to my therapy. Okay? Yes, toxicity isn't a monolith. So when I call people toxic on the internet, I'm not giving up on you. I'm not saying you're irredeemable. I'm not saying every part of you is toxic. I'm not saying there's nothing good about you. You can be a very loving, toxic person. You can be a incredibly abusive, toxic person. You can abuse people and love your dog. Okay? Would it have been helpful to have a Zoom therapy girl? What Zoom? Was Zoom? Did Zoom even exist? What Zoom? Isn't Zoom a new website? I never heard about Zoom till the pandemic. What's Zoom? This was 2017, girl. Online therapy? I never even heard of think. I never even thought about it, girl. No way, girl. Mm -mm. Online therapy? I did not even know that was a thing. In 2017, never even thought about online therapy. You know? But yeah, it's really good that it ended up happening that way. I'm really lucky. You know what I mean? I'm really lucky. Kitty says, eventually I knew I couldn't do it myself. So I, quotation, so I had to get my mom to take me to the psych ward. I told her no matter what I say, let them admit me. I can't help myself. And I really needed it. That's awesome. Zoom was around for a bit. Yeah, I never knew about online therapy before that. JJ says, did the getting out the door do the part of the healing? Uh, or if could have Zoomed, uh, would it have helped? I'm a very physical learner. I, I think I need to be physically there probably. Like if I do therapy in Croatia, which I'm trying to figure out, I, I hope I can go physically to an office. Um, I think it would be better, but I'm not sure yet. I probably could try online. Yui says, so wait, is it not typical that people go, damn, I think I might have some issue and go to therapy? No. What do you mean? No. How many people go to therapy? Lots of people. It takes a lot of work to go places for most people. I was not the exception. Like, I really was not the exception. I was just doing what I could at the time. But it's not typical for people to go, damn, I think something is wrong. Let me go to therapy. And even if they go to therapy, sometimes they self-sabotage and pick therapists that will yes man them so they never get better. Most people know something's wrong with them. It's like a dentist or a doctor. How many people know something's wrong with their teeth and don't go to the dentist because they're like, can't afford it? That's most people who need therapy. They can't afford it. But also they might not have the tools. I also couldn't afford it. I put it on a credit card. I put thousands of dollars on a credit card so I could go to therapy. And I don't regret it. It was the best debt I ever went into. So that's why I can't, I can't give it up. So I'm at the point that so you're that talking about the work, be, work, work. Yeah. But it has to balance with the actual money-making, self-sustaining work. Well, the thing is, if you can't survive, then this thing that's helping other people isn't going to be lo around long enough to help more people. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for... I, a reality check. Well, you're welcome. And speaking of reality, Bank of America. <laughs> okay. JJ says, why do you think there's such a stigma around therapy? Honestly, because people think you're dangerous or insane or you can't handle it yourself. And then there's stigma about going to therapy because of the money and the time it takes into it. And then the work is hard. Yui says, you taught me something new. Thank you. I seriously was under the impression that because I had that sentiment that a lot of other people did. Yeah, no, I think therapy is really difficult. It's difficult for people to get into. It's difficult for people to feel okay going to. It's difficult for people to admit they're going. It's expensive. It's not accessible to all people. It costs. Mine was mine was a hundred and I think forty-five dollars, but that was with a discount of like I think my I think my insurance paid twenty dollars. I think it was 165 an hour. I'm sorry, every 45 minutes. And I paid 145. I think that's what I remember. Something like that. 145 and twenty dollars my insurance covered. You're allowing to be taken advantage by the system. That <gasps> you, you hate so much. Oh my god. I know. But you're allowing it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That got me mad. And oh. anger makes me take action. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you have thirty nine dollars of fee, ninety four dollars of interest. Past you one hundred thirty one dollars. This is like, what are we doing? Okay. What are okay. we doing? That's confusing. One hundred seventy one dollars. I paid that. Um. One hundred seventy one. You, so you paid you a payment to towards it, but you, you you didn't, you paid a payment towards it, but you didn't pay enough to fully catch up. Late fees thirty nine dollars. Facebook thing. A cop cop mentorship. What's a mentorship? One hundred fifty eight dollars. 
What mentorship are you a part of? Oh, uh, that was for my Reiki and spiritual. See, and that's the other difference too. Name me a coach that would refund a client or name me like, cause they're running a business. If I was running a business, I would just take your money and I wouldn't care about your mental health. Like genuinely, I just think like if you're going to be a successful business person, you take everyone's money and you don't care about their mental health because genuinely like that's how I've seen most business run. Like I would not take this woman's money. If she came to me, especially in this state, I'd be like, girl, you're getting a refund. Go spend it on a therapist. Like I can't help you. Right. These coaches, whoever is working with this woman, they're bullshit, bro. Like this woman doesn't need a coach. She doesn't need a YouTuber. Okay. She needs a fucking mental health professional who's actually very serious about helping her. Well, healership training with oh. the magical Alexandra Michelle. Wonderful. Heal your banking account. <sighs> Alexandra Michelle better give her money back. I not spending money you don't have. I'm going to Reiki my bank account right now. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. That was a joke. Oh, okay. Well, I would. <laughs> it's all a joke to me. Casting networks. Oh. oh, he just said it's all a joke to me. Oh. Uh, and I, ooh. <laughs> Here you go. You can open your eyes. Are you praying for me? Thank you. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're positive. You have, 130, you have 139. Oh, click it. Let's see. Mm. Oh, thank goodness you have money. Commercials. Um, like, how, how are you getting home? How are you, how, how are you getting From home? Here? Yeah. How are you getting home? How are you getting back to Los Angeles? Okay. So I have been getting my together. I'm from here out of Austin, Texas. I'm going to fly to Washington DC and meet with my business consultant. We're going to take care of my taxes. We're going to take care of my budget. We're going to take care of all these things. So you are the perfect first step of giving me a beautiful, I'm very grateful financial audit before I get even more set, organized. Ah, uh. I have an aversion to this clearly. I, thought, I don't know. I thought you saw a spider or something. <laughs> no, spiders are cute. She's flying to Washington and then she's going home. Like she's just spending money. Like do it on Zoom, girl. Do the meeting on Zoom. Uh, Lift ride. You're here with your dude. Make him drive. Or make him pay. Oh, yeah. He's really amazing. He's been supporting in a lot of ways, but I don't want his money or anything anymore. I can't. Well, I you can't also stand it. just don't have any. So <laughs> somebody love this girl enough to get her some help someone love this girl enough man if this was my sibling bro if this was my homie bro well that's yeah, a lot worse than the thousand dollars i saw here and we're doing uh yoga and farm boy and uh some ott and um potentially parking and good cover brian russ yeah all i seasons, should not be eating out in sports no of course not can't afford to survive. You were negative money in your checking account at one point. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Stephanie says it's not going to lie. It's kind of annoying that the government is just paying her for her groceries while she buys top of the line supplements, celery juice, and grass wheat shots. Like, not even that. She's eating out at restaurants. Like, this is the problem with, like, look, someone will always take advantage of the system. I don't think we should punish people who aren't taking advantage because some people are. But I would argue, like, I can't tell because she's so mentally unwell. I can't tell if she's exactly who the system should be supporting or if we actually shouldn't be supporting her. And the dilemma I'm having is like not her father, not her partner. And to be fair, not Caleb, but to be fair, people don't know. Like, I really do think something's wrong with her. And I think she needs a lot of help. But I also think that she comes off like, quote, quote, functional, that if you met her, you would just think like she's kind of crazy. But you wouldn't if like, again, maybe I'm really wrong. Maybe she's very functional and everything's fine. But obviously, I would be like, really concerned you know, like, listen, I had, this isn't like real, like, you know, when you have that fantasy about like, what if we just needed this? What if the system was fixed from this? Like, I wonder how many people are homeless who are just mentally unwell and like given the right circumstance would completely just be functional again. Because again, like to choose homelessness though possible is not the same as the people who are genuinely choosing homelessness out of like mental health, which is not a choice. Like you have to understand what people are going through when they're homeless. It's not the ones you're thinking of who are like, I chose it. I wanted to run away from my parents' house. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the people that are shitting on themselves and have fucking wounds all over their bodies. That's not fucking normal. That's fucking mental health. And so again, like when I see that and people are just like, they chose to be there. Well, obviously not. 
that's not a choice. That is like something has gone so terribly wrong. And like, I wonder what we, what would happen to those humans if we cleaned them up and they sobered up and they were genuinely given the right tools with, could they like come back into society and just be like themselves again? Cause look, you and me, we feel pretty centered in ourselves, but you guys know we've had moments where we weren't. And if we didn't have the resources and the family and the support system to get better, like what would have happened to us? Like, and the idea, like I think about my friend who under, underwent psychosis, like if they didn't have a family, if they didn't have friends, like what would have happened to them? They probably would have ended up on the street. They probably would have accidentally run over somebody with their car. They probably, so many bad things could have happened. But because they had resources, because they had help, because their family's well off enough, like they got better and they become a normal part of society again. But again, this, imagine this happening to somebody with no resources. And what's worse is like, I'm not saying this girl is completely there, but obviously she's got all these people in her life and no one knows to do something. And I don't want, I don't expect them to because the world is so uneducated about it, but obviously something's going on. For me, this is obviously something's going on. Ren with the super chat. If she had joined the Discord yoga, it would have been $10. True. I do. Not me. I hire a professional yoga teacher to teach us. I pay her. She's the professional. To teach us yoga once a month for 30 minutes on the Discord. And right now, she is doing so. We are kicking. We're getting our butts kicked. It's chronically uh, health aware because I have fibromyalgia. And it's very, very um, accessible to all people. She's very good at leading the class. I'm on camera. She's on camera. So you can watch me fall over. So you know, you know, it's a sisterhood. <clears throat> yeah, let's take a look. Appreciate that. Um, here was the first episode. So this is on your Instagram? Did. Yeah. Bottom yeah. right would be the first episode. <laughs> Sorry. What, the what did I just watch? I didn't get um, any help from that. That's just a little personality flair to draw you in. Oh, is it still going? Yeah. This episode's about 10 minutes. They're oh. little long form for nowadays, you know, but. Unworthiness and rejection. When you're with your parents, do you ever feel like. Dad! Listen! Oh my God. Do you, Dad! You don't understand! Emily. You're not listening! Or was it just me? My show Healing Amber wants to remind you that you're not alone in your healing journey, no matter how it looks, no matter what stage you're in. It is an ongoing process. So I would love to show you my process for healing. If you think that's the craziest I got, it's not. Come on, Healing Amber, if you feel like you see yourself in me. Spoiler alert! Our first series drops in February, 2024. Mark your calendars. Get excited. Feel free to follow Healing Amber on Instagram if you wanna check out the behind the scenes of my production process. I wanna show you everything, clearly. Really not many secrets here. Is that boring? If you respect inner child work, this is the show for you. If you have an internet connection, if you like to to girls crying. If you know that healing would help you live your most authentic and aligned <laughs> life. I'm so excited. Okay. This is the show for you. Please feel free to send it to a friend. Me. I'm gonna go cry. Girl. JJ says a process for healing. Her process for healing. Healing what girl? Yeah, what healing girl? Oh, I think she's a mess. She's a mess. Obviously, this is mental health. Mental health is coming clearly through the screen. When recalling past Um. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm choking up a little bit because that was back in February when i first came out with the idea for ago. the show yeah you haven't done much for no. such a long i literally now, had a lot of love and then this one hater was like this isn't sustainable oh you can't listen to them <laughs> you can't read them i i used to think that like they were people that i would consider even hearing from but i don't even like get on any of the uh, yeah. apps and social media anymore barely even it's like smart. the only one i get on now is youtube but what i will say that last post did not have a lot of engagement no, i'm good yeah yeah put put time into this but this is not a abandon everything else and do into that because that has made negative money numbers wise yeah numbers wise it's not there impact on the world it's there 
Mm, not if no one sees it. Yeah, but if I affect one person, like even if just one person watching this episode. But again, right if you now, can't pay so your bills and you're homeless and you can't afford to eat and you starve, you're not going to be able to help other people with other videos. Yeah. So I, I need you to survive. Survive. I want to survive. I'm sick of survival mode. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. You can't be in survival mode and be in your joy, in my opinion. So I would say that's why she can't coach anyone if, you know, whatever, in finding their joy. Because, like, she doesn't even know what her joy is. You can't be in survival mode and be in your joy. Though you could literally, like, survival mode for me is a mentality. Right? Like, we're always all surviving. There's no point in life, no matter how rich or whatever you are, that you're not technically hustling and grinding. Right? So, like, you're always surviving. You're always paying your rent. You're always paying somebody. Like, your life could go away tomorrow. So, like survival mode is like a mindset i would say Ugh, mindset Ugh. i would just think it's like a perception like and then when you realize like okay life is just normal life and sometimes it gets hard but i'm not gonna let that crush my spirit my character who i am like that's different like if you went to iraq and you talk to my relatives who are literally fighting a war and going through like discrimination to the point of violence you wouldn't ask them if they were in survival mode they would just be like that's life what do you mean we're just in life but they would still have like a real sense of joy it was very interesting to see and that's kind of what I'm trying to connect to joy is my relatives have shown me and people in my life have shown me that you can have life be hard and you can still have joy it doesn't mean you're happy that life is hard but you wouldn't go to somebody in that situation and be like are you in survival mode right now they'd be like do you mean life? It's only here we have the privilege to talk about survival mode, which I do think is real, but we're having a different relationship with it. I do th think in America, we have a very specific relationship with survival mode, which is not rooted in like fighting wars. It's rooted in fighting sort of like our own discipline. Because look at her, she's overspending. Even when I was in survival mode, I was in debt. I was fighting my own discipline. So often when people are in survival mode, a lot of them, not the poor, the super poverty, and not everybody, but there is an element to it that also comes down to our discipline. Not fully, right? Don't take me out of context here. But I will say that I would love for her to find her joy. So even when she's having trouble financially, she's not always in survival mode. And also when I was in survival mode, I was between working two to three jobs like always and having a mental health, health crisis. She's not even working one job. So I kind of feel like her survival mode, like her crisis is bigger than, but she's not acknowledging it because she's too mentally unaware and mentally healthy that maybe she can't. But that kind of, you know, I'm like, girl, I hope her boyfriend, like maybe I'll post this video and like title it in a way, like maybe her guy can see this. Like maybe I'm totally wrong. I just think that my instinct tells me I can't, I couldn't help her be introspective because this isn't an introspection issue. I don't think she needs a physical coach. I don't think she needs, I think she needs like some sort of real doctor intervention. You know, where does she even get money from? Men, her father, sugar daddies, and her boyfriend. You know? <sighs> yeah. For what? real, for real. You've done like nothing. You're not doing anything. Yeah, survival mode is in here. Survival mode is in oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So she knows that, but oi, 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 oi. here's what I want to ask. Well, maybe she's saying survival mode. Is she crying for help? Like, is she literally saying like survival mode is in here? Like she's saying I have mental health problems or is she actually saying like survival mode is the perception you're having with like, you know, yourself. What Deal. is she saying? Yes. Ask me because I'm ready to give up. So feel free. Ask me. Okay. If you were where I am right now, oh, wow. I, my issue is right now there's a lack of routine. And I've been maybe she's neurodivergent. Maybe she has ADHD. Very hard to form habits. Living in a chaotic timeline, essentially. So I've been told by other YouTubers, you got to create a schedule for yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's what humans do. That's why if you can't do it, you got to get a normal people job where they tell you when to come to work. Literally, the discipline it takes, you have to get up every day. You have to work all day. You have to work every day. Like if you want to be a content creator, you have to be willing to wake up you know, you don't know if you're going to get paid. There's absolutely no guarantee of money here. Like there, I'm very serious. If you think you're going to be a content creator, you have got to be aware that every month you might not make any money unless you have a very established thing going. So if you were me, 
what schedule would you set so that I'm still putting in a fulfilling amount of time into healing Amber, but I'm also putting a fulfilling amount of time into money making? Okay. Yeah. This is what I would do. Just being what I've been through, knowing what I know and having gotten out of debt, worse debt than you're in. This yeah. is what I would do right now. I would uh, wake up tomorrow, apply for jobs like it's a full-time job. Keep mm-hmm. doing that. Uh, build a resume with a resume builder. Mm-hmm. Uh, get other eyes on it. We can take eyes on it as well. You send it to us. We'll take eyes on it. Uh, do a bunch of different work, work, work. Get a, get a job. Mm-hmm. Get a job. Well, let's just pretend it's nine to five. It might mm-hmm. be overnight. I don't care. 50 bucks an hour, whatever the minimum wage is there. I need mm-hmm. you to make money so we can only start making progress on this. Mm-hmm. Boom. Minimum 40 hours a week. We're doing that. And then you're right. If we want this to be a full-time job, then an extra 20 do- hours a week minimum, mm-hmm. we are putting, we're scheduling aside and we're like, what yeah. does it take in order to get this off the ground set? Whatever the goal is, that's off the ground. Okay, what does it take to do that? Schedule out what is necessary in order to hit that when you're not at your full-time job. You're Mm going to be tired. You're not going to see your friends or whatever as much as you'd like to because you're grinding for a larger purpose Mm -hmm. and we're surviving. We're not putting adult responsibilities off because of a want. I would be working minimum 40 hours a week at any job because right now bringing in $1 is more than- In and out, girl, and they'll feed you every day. See, work at a job where they feed you lunch so you don't have to pay for food. In and out will feed you. Think about it. You work in and out 20 bucks an hour in L.A. And then you still get a free meal every day. Hello, win win. You make essentially. Um, I mean, you made some with the ad revenue. I but w- this girl's not going to be able to get a job because she's mentally like she needs a mental health professional. Also, just do that as much as possible. But you need to work. We need to grow up. We need to just become an adult. We need to work like everyone else. You're not entitled to something. You're not right. entitled. It sucks. Now, it, it really sucks. I would love you to have that wonderful job uh, and wonderful life. You weren't born in a family just like I wasn't born in a family where we can just do whatever we want and we can fall back on a bunch of money. That's not the lives we come from. We got to work for our So you need to go make some money, work like it's a second full-time job on that other until it makes sense to quit and do it. Mm, yeah. Statistical likelihood is it probably won't. And I hate saying that because I'm just one of the blessed lucky few that have gotten here. I'm in an incredibly... Pro- Discord said, isn't the solution that she needs more sugar daddies? No. Sugar daddies are very, very like they're... That's a lot of emotional labor. She cannot handle it. And also, like, she's not fully prepared to handle sugar daddies. She needs absolutely not. No. Privileged position. And I hate telling someone that statistically it might not work. Just going off of numbers and trying to be responsible on the side of the table. Okay, let's pretend it doesn't. You might just be working the other. You're pretty. You you can focus on that. Think think of different verticals. Maybe if we do the ASMR or we're doing modeling or something like that. Mukbang. Whatever you want to do, if we if we are able to make a career off of that and filter people into the stuff that we think is healing the world, mm-hmm. you know, then that's a win still. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to be the content right out of the gate of here's how you heal yourself. Heal yourself. If we're making content that, uh, so we launched a budgeting program. It costs money to participate in, so that hopefully you know we could make our money back. But I believe personally that we did something that is better than has ever been found online, and it can actually help change people's lives. We actually went out with the intent to do that. And we're, this show is a platform. Oh, he's got a budgeting program. See, I don't think Caleb's a coach. Is he doing coaching work? I don't call it coach. Coaching is such a cringe term, bro. I know Dr. K has a coaching program, cringe. I just think coaching is so cringe. It just sounds so cringe. I need a coach. It's just like, okay. Like, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have a good bubble experience with that. You need to make money because you're not paying your payments. Yeah. This, you're able to do that when this debt is gone and you have a fully funded emergency fund by like a year. Why? Because mm-hmm. it minimizes your risk profile. It will get, you don't have a debt obligation on a monthly basis to pay for at that point. That's incredible. That means you need to make less money to survive. You have a fully funded emergency fund. It can help subsidize you through the slower months. Mm-hmm. That lowers your risk profile. You're able to put your full energy and focus into there. Mm-hmm. I can't give you a time period for when that's going to be because you just need to go make money. I feel like she zoned out. I feel like she disassociated a bit. Now, and I need to see what your budget looks like after that. But that's what I would do, man. Honestly, and it hurts to say, but it's what I would want someone to say to me if I was in your position. Mm-hmm. You just need to grow the f*** up. But my little ones. I don't give a shit about your little ones. Yeah, see, I think like her, that all of that, like I definitely think there's some possible level of like, I feel really bad for her because obviously like it's I love making fun of people, but I just can't make fun of her. I'm tell I just feel like it's something pretty severe. She I think she's like, yeah, I'm just getting like super severely mentally unwell, which is a bummer, like psychosis or something. She's super responsible for everything she does, obviously. Um, it's hard for me to make fun of her at this point because like I just feel like she's not really like here on the planet, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are I'm just joking with you. Because the way that life goes for a lot of people is that we're taken over by our little ones. So the way that manifests for me. See, like she's. <sighs> Bro. 
Like, this isn't just like, I'm depressed. This feels so much more serious. But like, you know. Is boom. I have been letting them keep us safe and sound, hanging out with our friends. I got a little emotional charge when you were like, you're not gonna be able to see your friends as much. I started tearing up because my little ones within were like, oh my God, we're gonna be alone. And that is the worst fear inherently of any human being. Yeah, you're gonna have coworkers now. <laughs> my other servers. <laughs> but in other ways that people are taken over by their little ones is like with you, they don't believe that they're beautiful when they are. You've changed so many people's lives. I see a beautiful soul. Thank you. So your little one just needs to be told that on a daily basis. Whenever they feel fat, whenever they don't feel attractive, you reassure them, no, you're beautiful. Oh, I'm not as fat, but I'm a fat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so thank you. That's exactly the medicine that I needed to hear. And I will get that job. It's not going to be one that you would pick for me, but I don't care as long I'm as it's a job that makes money and you're putting in the hours necessary to survive and pay off the debt. I don't care what job Okay. Is. It's going to make as long a as it's not very fast. But that's the thing. I have the means. I have the skills. I don't like universities or systemic, but I went to an expensive university and I have all these skills that I've put so much time and energy into, and they're really high paying skills. I've just been scared to change my life because with like one or two gigs, boom, I'm independent. Maybe I don't need to, ah, it freaks me out because Life would change in so many ways. I could finally be gayer. Like I could take women out on dates and like be mommy and, and pay for that. Cameras relationship over there? Yeah. Well, I'm not judging. <laughs> well, that does not pertain to this. <laughs> <laughs> like there are just so many little ways that life would change when I start to make money and the change is scary, but change is always, 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 and it always has been beneficial and for the highest good. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because you have changed my life today. Well, that's a beyond obvious zero out of 10 Hammer Financial score. Great video. Great job, Caleb. He handled that really well. I didn't expect him to know anything, but I would say like my intuition is telling me um, she's really going through it. If her dad, her boyfriend, if somebody who loves her sees this, like think about getting your girl into the proper diagnosis treatment. Think about helping her out because I really think our girl is suffering. Um, like I said, I do love making fun of people on the internet, but I just can't make fun of her. You know, um, you know, she's, I just think she's sick and I feel for that, you know, that's hard. Um, yeah, I think she's really like, she's going through it. Yeah. That's a, that was sad, bro. What a sad way. Okay. Wow. Well. Damn. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, dun, dun.